This is StarTex HD PVR using USB 2. It's very interesting, you should definitely stick around to find out what we think of it. So starting with input ports, on the left we have HDMI, composite video in, which is the RGB connectors with the coax cable, S-video in uh, for some reason, and composite uh, audio in, that's left and right as well. On the other side we have the exact same connectors, the only difference is that these are the pass-through ports that allow you to view what you're playing, such as a game console. This is powered, powered and uh, transferred data via USB 2, this is the Type-B connector, and on the bottom you'll find four rubber feet which do a reasonable job at keeping it stable, even though it's incredibly light. Now, the do it does have two activity LEDs, one for power that you can see on now, and one on the other side for activity. So this is the software side. Um, now, I'm actually using my Canon 100D into the HDMI input, and as you can see, there are plenty of inputs and outputs for this uh, for almost any type of device. I'm actually using my Zoom H1 as my audio, and it's something I'll cover uh, in just a minute, but it is a little bit difficult to set up, because I'm actually using the Zoom H1 as a OBS, or Open Broadcaster, input, as opposed to uh, into the camera. I did try, there is actually a cable connected to the camera um, for the line out for the mic uh, into the mic in, which is what I normally do, but unfortunately that doesn't seem to be working with this software. Now, what is the software? StarTech, uh, if you go to the uh, product page for this and hit support, once you've downloaded the dr uh, USB drivers for this, um, you'd also want to download the Viva Station application. Now, this application is basically, if you see me looking, uh, OBS is on this screen and Viva Station's on here. Um, so, this application is basically the sort of management tool and recording suite uh, all in one uh, for this, uh, this product. Um, so, uh, Let's take a look. So we've got the window which is resizable, you can maximize, minimize, close and keep it on top uh, if you wanted to. As you can see it mainly focuses on the uh, content input um, as you can see in, in, as, the, as the window mainly. Um, and this, uh, the reason that it's not just the footage from the camera is because it's actually a direct link from the camera taking out. I'm sure that I can set it up a little bit differently but I wanted to show you like this just to show that it's, you know, that's the camera working and not just, you know, me faking it or something or other. So, if you move your mouse down to the bottom of the screen, you can see there's a sort of toolbar that pops up with the StarTech logo, of course. Um, from the left, we've got the capture button, which our record button, um, which allows you to record footage and to wherever you've saved it in the setup menu. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's cool. You can set the bit rate that you want to save to. Um, and it's great for things like if you just want to record footage from things like games on your Xbox or PlayStation, um, you can record that straight to your hard drive and edit it at a later date. You can also hit the uh, snapshot button, which takes a, a still frame from your uh, footage. Um, you know, if you fly a bicycle into a helicopter in GTA 5, for example, that'd be worth screenshotting. You've also got the display ratio button, which, as you can probably guess, changes the display ratio of the content. If you leave it in free mode, it will change and adapt to whatever content you put in. So right now, the frame I'm giving it is 16 by 9. Um, if I change the settings to be 4 by 3, or you know, I uh, plugged into the you know composite ports or something like that, a SNES or you know, or a game console, they default to 4 by 3. So it probably default to 4 by 3 for that one. You can auto set things to 4 by 3 if you wanted to for. Some some strange reason, or you could force it to 16 by 9. Now there are audio controls here for up, down, and mute. Um, right, I, as said, I couldn't get them to actually work. Uh, I couldn't get the audio for the camera to be passed through. But I have used this for my Xbox before recording, uh, you know, footage. I've also used it for um, most of the uh, Windows 10 coverage we did. Um, all the live preview from that uh, was done via HDMI uh, from my laptop. Um, so that's uh, it does work, uh, just not with my camera. There's also the playback button, which allows you to play back all the footage you've recorded through the studio. There's also a scheduled record button, which is actually quite interesting. You can add a scheduled record. You can set up you know which device, which um, uh, you know input you want, uh, the bit rate, and then you can set the time and you can set it to do every day, every Sunday, every Monday, whatever. Um, and you record in silent mode so that it just records, and that'd be quite useful for things like you know. Uh, a, um, you know, a CCTV system if you were using a, a HDMI capture card for that. Um, but you know, it's, it's quite cool, you know, if you have regular live streams or something like that, you can just auto set it up, which is quite nice. 
You also have the source input, which just allows you to change what the source, uh, which source you're using, and there's the final setup button, which for some reason opens on the other screen. So we've got a sleep timer, which you can set. So if you hit the set button here uh, in 30 minutes after uh, no activity on either the uh, input itself or uh, on the screen, you it can do any of those things. Other just changes the name and language and uh, language and stuff like that. Marquee is actually something that I probably would never use in my life. Um, I put in this input text. I hit apply and hit start, and as you can see, Marquee is basically just slow moving text across the screen. Um, it's uh, it's quite slow. Let's 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 speed it up. Let's let's hit apply. Stop. Let's stop that. So we've got the display ratio, which as you uh, saw by the button, you can change the free or uh, all such. Um, I'm not actually too sure what um, this is really for. Um, you can change the sort of uh, you know overhead um, if you really want to. Um, I didn't really see much point in that. Um, the uh, video settings are the more important ones, so you can set the color mode if, for example, your uh, HDMI output or you know even your camera just isn't outputting um, the best of settings, and you can change uh, this VMR type here. Um, the capture settings are just what path you're putting your video to and file names, so if I wanted my file names to be called, I don't know, capture127. I can do that, and you also change the capture bit right here, which uh, make sure you do that because I think it's default set to something like a, a, a hundred kilobits a second, which really you won't get very good video content out of. And then also the um, uh, snapshot format, which automatically or as uh, default comes as BMP, but um, I'd recommend you know JPEG or, or PNG for that one. And again, you can take uh, multiple snapshots uh, if you want to and change the picture path. Other than that, that's pretty much the software. Um, to move on to the audio uh, I was talking about earlier, um, I'm using Open Broadcaster to record the screen to record uh, me to be able to talk about this. Um, I'm actually, as I said, I tried to use the micro, uh, my Zoom H1 into the camera as my audio source, but for some reason it just won't work, which is a bit annoying, um, but hey, that's kind of life. Um, but one thing I would like to mention is that there is a significant audio delay for this. Um, I roughly measured it at around about three seconds um, for the actual capture card itself, which uh, means that you have to change the audio settings on OBS if you're using this. I actually found that around about 1,200 milliseconds was uh, around about good for the you know the, the lag between the mic uh, audio coming in and being recorded and the video input coming in and being recorded. Um, but the overall lag, roughly for like clapping your hands and stuff, uh, I found to be about three seconds, give or take. Um, um, it seemed to depend sometimes. Uh, right now, obviously, as you can see, it's relatively working with uh, the 1.2 second delay. But, you know, that's... It's strange because it does vary a tad. But, uh, anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much it for the software side. We're going to wrap this up uh, in a little bit of a conclusion with all the awards and such. And we'll be back uh, in a sec. So in terms of awards, this is going to get a 3 for value for money, it's actually really expensive. And um, performance is going to get a 5 because it did fairly well in what I tested it in. Functionality, the software really could be better, and for style, it's going to get a 4, it's quite light, you know, not too bad, quite plastic, and a Tekton GB score of 4. Now please do check out the written review of this article, we do go into a lot more detail with this um, in just you know the, the points and, and some issues that I had, so if you do want to read more about this please do check it out there. Other than that, you know, just check out the website in general as we do try to, you know, as I said, give the best possible sort of coverage for everything including written and you know video reviews. So you know, check that out, we also do news there uh, now as well just to keep you guys up to date on all that's going on in the tech world. Other than that, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, it helps a hell of a lot. Lot. Hit the like button if you did like it, dislike if you dislike it, leave a comment and let us know what you thought of the video, the product, or anything else you've seen today. And other than that, we'll see you all in the next video. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video. You've probably seen enough of me already, so I'm going to go away. Right after I say, if you haven't already liked or disliked, just let us know why in the comments down below as well. Um, check out some of our other videos, hopefully there'll be some somewhere around me. And then also, um, feel free to subscribe as well, that really helps us out, um, and yeah, obviously shows companies that you love us. So if you do love us, check us out on Facebook or Twitter, hopefully there will also be some stuff around here maybe. Um, but otherwise that's pretty much it from me, so we'll see you all in the next video.